But these mountains were part of a continuous uh, chain which split Asia in two and was the source of all the great rivers of Asia. And following Ale Alexander's footsteps up here with this wind, you can really feel whatever you think about him, what an amazing achievement it was to drive an army over these mountains. Nothing stopped him, said the historian Arian. Nothing put him off. He just kept coming on and on, whatever the cold or the starvation. He drove on, and in the end, his enemies were struck with fear at the speed of his advance. Alexander had burned his wagons when he entered Afghanistan. They slowed the army, they were always breaking down. So his troops crossed the country entirely on foot or horseback. Early in the spring, Alexander set off. Ahead of him, the great mass of the Hindu Kush, which rises to 20,000 feet. On the other side, his enemy Bessus was waiting. There were three main passes. Bessus expected Alexander to come the direct route, and he devastated the land there to deny Alexander supplies. But Alexander never did what was expected. He chose the longer eastern route, and went up the Panchia Valley, heading for the Khawak Pass. Travelling up the Panchia Valley today, it's almost impossible to believe that a great army could have made its way through here. But they did. Throughout the whole of history, armies had to find a way over the Hindu Kush. And uh, this tended to be the favourite route. Uh, Tamburlaine the Great, for example, came this way on his way from the Oxus to India in 1398. And your main problem, especially in the spring, was not the terrain, but was the cold, and especially the lack of food and provisions. And as it turned out, that was exactly the problem that Alexander faced. We abandoned our Land Rover and took a lift on towards the foot of the pass. The track began to rise now. We passed travellers walking in long zigzags up the hillsides. It was easy to imagine the Macedonians doggedly trudging forward. actually only made up for cars a few years ago and until that point it was really a track that only horses could use and although Alexander's army must have been able to uh, come along the river valley in that, those wide open spaces in the early part of the Panchia here they would have been single file so it would have taken them hours to pass any given point and the army must have stretched for 10 miles who knows maybe all the way back down the Panchia which explains why it took 17 days to cross As Arian says, Alexander's mind was now totally concentrated on defeating Bessus.
And here on the pass that night, I could almost feel the magnetism of Alexander's leadership and the sheer excitement that his men must have felt marching with him. Next day, the track went higher, the air was thinner, and the land more barren. For us, as no doubt for the Greeks, walking was now an effort. They were over 11,000 feet now, and the starving troops were suffering from chronic fatigue brought on by altitude sickness. We brought few supplies with us, and we took our snacks where we could find them. They say this is good stuff for, um, for long distance traveling. The uh, dried mulberries compressed together, and it's the kind of dried fruit that the Mujahideen lived on and during the war with the Russians in these mountains. It's, it keeps your energy up. At such times, Alexander was inspirational. He'd run up and down the column, cheering the men, giving a helping hand, lifting those who'd fallen, unflagging. I think this is it. <laughs> Finally, we reached the top and saw the view Alexander's men had seen all those years before. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. We made it. The top of the Kamat Pass is about 12,000 feet, and there the road stretching away down to the land of Bactria and former Soviet Central Asia. And around us, the mountains of the Hindu Kush. The Greeks knew that these mountains were part of a continuous uh, chain which split Asia in two and was the source of all the great rivers of Asia. And following Ale Alexander's footsteps up here with this wind, you can really feel, whatever you think about him, what an amazing achievement it was to drive an army over these mountains. Nothing stopped him, said the historian Arian. Nothing put him off. He just kept coming on and on, whatever the cold or the starvation. He drove on, and in the end, his enemies were struck with fear at the speed of his advance. I'll bet they were.